Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's take a look at an example of a superposition type problem, or at least the methodology we're going to use to solve for the currents in the circuit is called the superposition method. What that means is that we have this initial circuit right here, which contains two voltage sources, and we're going to split it apart into two separate circuits. We're going to eliminate this voltage source and draw the circuit without it, and then we're going to eliminate this voltage source and draw a circuit without it. Now notice in each case, we only have one source. We have this source right here in this circuit, and this source in this circuit. We're going to find the current through the inductor in this case, the current through the inductor in this case, and then we simply add the two together. It almost works like magic. So that's what we mean by superposition. We take this one and superimpose it on this one to get the original circuit. So it makes it easier to find the current through the inductor using this simplified circuit, but this source gone. And then here we find the current to this inductor right here with this source gone. And then we simply add the two results together. So the current that we're looking for through the inductor is simply the sum of I1 from this circuit and I2 from this circuit. And we just lost our light. What happened? Okay, we're good? Yeah. All right, we had some technical difficulties with the light and the camera, but I think we're back in business here. All right, so now all we have to do is find I1 and I2 and simply add them together. Well, maybe it's not so simple, but let's go ahead and see how that's done. So using this circuit right here, we have a steady state voltage supply, eight volts pushing current to the circuit. Notice in a steady state condition, the inductor offers no opposition to the current, so essentially this is a short circuit. And all the current will go through the inductor, and none of the current will go to the 4 ohm resistor. Why go to the 4 ohm resistor when you have a path that offers no resistance at all? So all the current will flow through here. So to find I1, I1, we simply take the voltage divided by the resistance, because we only have a resistance there, so that's equal to 8 volts divided by 2 ohms, and that's equal to 4 amps. So I1 is equal to 4 amps, and I'll just call this I1. That makes it really easy. All right, now what about the second circuit? Now we have an alternating voltage supply. Notice we had a 1 Henry inductor. So to find the reactants, the, the J4 reactants, what we have to do is we have to multiply the angular uh, oscillation omega, which we have that equal to, where are we here? cosine of 4t, so that's cosine of omega t, so omega was 4, the inductance was 1, multiplied together, we get a J4 reactance. In other words, magnitude of 4 with a phase angle of 90 degrees ahead of, of the, um, the voltage being ahead of the current. Now, uh, let's see here, so we have a J4 inductor, we have a 2 ohm resistor, a 4 ohm resistor, and an oscillating voltage source of 10 volts with a phase angle of 0 degrees. So what we should do is think of it this way. We f first can find the total current, I total, which will be equal to the voltage supply divided by the total impedance of the entire circuit. So let's find the total impedance of the circuit. So first we find the impedance of the parallel portion. The parallel portion is those two right here. And so that would be the product over the sum. So this is equal to the product of 2 times J4 divided by 2 plus J4, so that's equal to J8 over 2 plus J4, and of course we're going to write that in magnitude, uh, let's see, do we have to, yeah, we'll have to write it as magnitude and phase angle format, so this is going to be 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, divided by, uh, let's see here, uh, that's 16, that's 20, take the square root of 20, which is 4.472, 4.472 with a phase angle of 2, take the inverse tangent of 63.435 degrees, 63.435 degrees. And of course we have 4 divided by 2, which is 2, so we're taking the inverse tangent of 2, which gives us that angle. So let's work that out. So 8 divided by 4.472 equals 1.789, 1.789 with a phase angle of 90 minus 
0.435, we get 26.565 degrees, 26.565 degrees. Let me write that a little bit bigger. So we have 8 divided by 4.472, that was 1.789. 1.789. Of course, now we're going to have to write that again into real imaginary parts because we're going to have to add it to the 4 ohm resistor there. So Z parallel is equal to 26.565. Take the cosine of that, multiply times 1.789. That gives us, oh, exactly, 1.6 plus J and 26.565, take the sine of that, times 1.789 equals, and that's exactly 0 0.8, so plus 0 0.8j. All right, that's the parallel z. Now z total is equal to 4 plus the parallel z, which is equal to 4 plus 1.6 plus j 0 0.8, and that gives us 5.6 plus J 0.8. So there's the total impedance of the circuit. Now, we notice that the current, I total, shouldn't be I1, we're looking for I total, it's going to be the voltage divided by the impedance. Okay, so we have to write that as magnitude and phase angle format as well. So let's do that. So 5.6 squared plus 0.8 squared equals, take the square root of that, which is, so this would be equal to 5.657 with a phase angle of 0.8 divided by 5.6, take the inverse tangent, 8.13 degrees. Okay, so now we have the total impedance, we have the voltage right here, and now we can get the total current run going through the circuit, the second circuit like this. All right, I total is equal to V over Z total. And V is going to be 10 with a phase angle of zero degrees divided by 5.657 with a phase angle of 8.13 degrees which is equal to 10 divided by 5.657. That gives me 1.768. 1.768 with a phase angle of minus 8.13 degrees. So this is the total current, I total, in the second circuit. Now we need to find I2. To find I2, we essentially have a current divider. How much of the current will go through here and how much of the current will go through there? So, in that respect, we just only care about I2, which is equal to I total, times the resistance of the other branch, 2 divided by the total resistance, which would be 2, or in this case, impedance, which would be 2 plus J4. All right, so I total is equal to 1.768 with a phase angle of minus 8.13 degrees. That's a terrible looking three, there we go. Multiply that times two with a phase angle of zero degrees, just to kind of keep the format the same. And in the denominator, we have two plus J4. And we already have that worked out right here, which is equal to 4.472 with a phase angle of 63.435 degrees. All right, now we're ready to calculate I2. So we have that times 2 divided by 4.472 equals, which is equal to 0.791 with a phase angle of 8.13 plus 63. 0.435, so phase angle of minus 71.565 degrees. So now we have I2 and we have I1. Now we want to add those together, but to add them together I need to go back to the real and imaginary part. 
So let's take uh, 71.565, take the cosine of that, and multiply it times 0 0.791 equals, so that is equal to 0 0.250 uh, plus, no, minus, because it's a negative angle, J. So now we take the sine of that, 71.565, take the sine and multiply times 0.791 equals, so that gives us minus J, 0 0.750. Hmm, very nice numbers. And that's I2. So now to find the total current through the inductor, so now we have I, which is equal to I1 plus I2, which is equal to 4 plus 0 0.25 minus J 0 0.75. So now when we add them all together, the current to the inductor will be 4.25 minus J 0 0.75. And that is how we use superposition to solve the current in any part of the circuit. Now notice what we did. We simply had two voltage supplies. We rewrote the circuit with only one of the supplies here and the other supply over here. Then we calculate the current separately through the inductor by calculating I1 and I2. Once we have that, we combine the two, and that will then be the current through the inductor. And that is how it's done. It's almost like magic, but it works. Magic? Yeah, I think it's like magic. Don't you think it's magic? You take the circuit, you split into two circuits, you calculate the current in each, you add it together, and you get the right answer. Magic. Magic.